Good morning, this is Pastor Pear. I would like to say Happy Easter to each and every one of you this morning. My text is coming from Matthew, the 28th chapter, 5 through the 7 verses. And I'll be reading from the NIV uh, verse. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. In verse number 7. Then go quickly and tell his disciple, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. And I want to use for a subject this morning, Jesus has ri risen. Jesus has risen. My brothers and my sister, we have learned that there is only one thing that will last forever. And that is God's love for us. That love will never lose its power. And I heard the songwriter say, it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. That love was made especially clear to us when Jesus died on the cross and nothing else shows how much God love us like that. That is for sure love, a love that is everlasting. Now if you really think about it, there is no greater love than the one that laid down their life for a friend. The Bible says, may I never boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. And Paul said that in Galatians 6 chapter 14 verse. And what I really like about Paul when he said in Galatians 2 20, and when he said that I am crucified with Christ, never yet I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. Every day we see the crosses around us. People wear crosses as jewelry. They hang crosses on the wall. And they use crosses as a key change. And when you pass by a church, you will see a cross on the church steeple. And we even see some people who wear the cross as a tattoo on their body. And what comes to my mind when I see a cross, I see the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus because I know what he has done for me. He has paid that ultimate price. And then Isaiah had mentioned to all of us, and he said that uh, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity, and on him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and by his stripes we are here. And so I'm reminded that one day that Jesus and his disciple were walking along the road, and Jesus asked them, Who do people say that I am? And the disciple answered, well, Son, say, You are the John the Baptist, or one of the prophets. And you, who do you say? that I am. And Peter said that you are the Christ, the Messiah. And Peter have given the right answer, but keep in mind that Jesus said, because it is necessary for me to suffer 
many terrible things. And well, brothers and sisters, well, when Jesus said that, he said that I would be arrested, try and keep. But after three days, I will rise again. And I'm reminded of a songwriter. I will rise again and there is no power on earth will keep me down. And Peter didn't like what he had heard because he knew Jesus had done so much for all of us. But Peter took Jesus and he took Jesus aside and told him to stop talking like that. Because Peter realized he understand that Jesus is the Christ. But Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. You are looking at things from the human point of view, not from the eyes of the Lord. But brothers and sisters, you know, Jesus predicted his death. And he told his disciple that one of you will betray me. And now during the time that Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem, and one day he took 12 disciples aside and said to them, We are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will deliver over to the chief priests and the teachers of law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and crucified. And on that third day, he will rise again to life. And we as human beings, we, we don't like to talk about death. But Jesus had already took the sting of death for us because we look at death as something bad. Jesus looked at death in the eyes of the divine glory because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus, we have life, and we have life after death. Jesus called the crowd of the people who had gathered around to come and join him and his disciples. And Jesus told them, that If any of you want to be any of my followers, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross, and follow me. And if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will be saved. So what Jesus is saying here, he was willing to give up everything he had so that we could have everlasting life if we follow him. So we must also be willing to take up our cross to give up everything and to follow Jesus. We should give up selfish ways, talking about one another, stabbing other folks in the back. But when you follow Jesus, you already have the victory because the victory belongs to Jesus. So the songwriter say, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. And then the songwriter saying, when I rose up this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew that the Lord would bring me out. I felt on my knees and said, Lord, help me please. I got up singing and shouting the victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine today, and I told Satan, victory today is mine. And the songwriter just went on and talked about joy is mine, and Satan just get behind me. And happiness is mine. Get ye behind me. And I told Satan, get thee behind me, because the songwriter knew what the Lord has done for him. So at the cross, it's more than, than a piece of jewelry. At the cross, it's more than the work of art. At the cross, it's more than 
than, than decoration on the church steeple. It is a reminder of Jesus' great love for us and our call to follow him. The cross of Jesus is the foundation of our faith. It is the cornerstone. And Jesus told his disciples in the upper room one day, and he said that, yes, my friend, that one of you is going to betray me. And I can imagine that they said, and they were murmuring to one to the other and say, is it I, is it I? And when Judas spoke, he said, it is I. And the Lord knew that Judas, one of his disciples, would betray him for 30 pieces of silver. So, brothers and sisters, the devil got a way to try to steal our joy, even people of faith. And he would even try the very elect to deceive the very elect. So the Bible tells us to watch as well as pray. And I'm reminded of the prophet Zechariah. He looked forward to the coming of Jesus when he said, On that day, a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the inhabitant of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. Well, my brothers and my sisters, thank be to God, we see an empty cross. Man made it for evil and for punishment. But God will overturn it for the good by the power and the purpose of God to the trumpet of the resurrection of Jesus. Have you been to the cross? Have you been to the cross? Have you been to the cross? The cross meant death for Jesus. But praise be to God. It is a place where life is ministered to us through his death. And the Father told, and as Jesus was on the cross, and Jesus told, and looked towards the heaven, and told his Father, forgive them. They not know what they do. But brothers and sisters, there is forgiveness for you at the cross. And today you will be with me because there is salvation at the cross. Thief on the left and a thief on the right. And one of the thieves said that if you are the Christ, will you remember me? And the Lord said today, you will be with me in paradise. There is peace at the cross. There is mercy at the cross. And there is forgiveness at the cross. Woman, here is your son. There is love for you at the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There is torment for you at the cross. I thirst, Jesus suffered for you and for me at the cross. It is finished, Jesus was the victory over sin for you at the cross. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. There is eternal security for you and for me at the cross. And oh yes, if I was at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart roll away. And it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Yes, my brothers and sisters, what a sweet Jesus we have because the fact that he went to the cross for you and for me because of the sins of the world. And he has given us the victory for those who love him, those who have the relationship with him, and those who care. So when I go to the cross, I give it all to him. Because when I get on my bending knees and pray and tell the Lord, thank you for what 
you have done. Thank you for, for waking me up this morning. Thank you for starting me on my way. I thank God because when he saved my life, he turned my life all the way around. And now I can tell somebody what he done for me. This morning, we worship a risen Savior who have given his all to us. And he have paid the ultimate price because the God that whom we serve, he is a risen God. He is alive and well. And he sees all that is happening around the world. Let us bow heads for a moment. Oh Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you for what thou has given to all of us on today. We ask, dear God, that you will continue to give us divine strength and power. And dear God, we ask that when challenges get in the way, we ask, dear God, that you will fight those challenges for us. And now, God, we're going to give it all back to you. We thank you. We magnify your name. We love you because you first love us. These and all things that we ask in your mighty name that we pray. And let us all say amen. Again, happy Easter. May God bless you. May God continue to smile on you. And may he continue to shower his blessings all over you and your family. We love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.